It may not be a set in stone theme, but for the fourth year in a row, the ninja seasonal banner returns. Today we have two Fey newcomers with Reyna and Heather joining the party. With his rightful red armor, Zelgius brings some interesting new maneuvers with him, and he'll be keeping an eye on Duel Sanaki and Makaya. We'll talk about everyone's stats and skills, plus discuss some general playstyle and other build ideas. The first star focus unit is Ninja Reyna. You can get her at 4 star and 5 star rarity. To no surprise, Reyna will ride her Kenshi, and she's a green flying archer. For stats, she has 40 HP, 43 attack, 45 speed, 24 defense, and 31 res. Reyna has attack and defense super boons, with attack generally being the best one to have since our ninja units once again focus on brave weaponry. Stat wise, Reyna isn't breaking any records, but her base offenses are perfectly serviceable. She should be able to take a straight hit. For old skills, Reyna has Glimmer Master Special and a very nice selection of attack and speed catch 3 and speed and defense rain 3. Te uh, attack and speed catch 3 is now free to play accessible via Zephia, but reigns are still a bit tougher to come by. For Inheritable Weapon, Reyna has a new Ninja Brave Bow, the Kumo Yumi Plus, Kumo meaning cloud as seen by the weapon's design. Kumo Yumi has 7 might, but has a regular 2 range warping built into it. If you initiate combat, you get brave attacks, and if the foe has more than 75% health, you get plus for all stats in combat. It may seem simple, combat wise, but this brave weapon has 0 stat penalties, and unless you need true damage specifically, plus 4 attack is almost basically the same as Ninja Yumi's extra damage effect. White Cat Bow Plus is still the highest potential for damage, but its brave effect requires a speed check. Kumo Yumi and Ninja Yumi just have brave attacks on initiation. There is also the Wyvern Ninja Brave Bow from last year, which is dual phase brave attacks, but it is def uh, defense focused. Either way, this is another fine brave bow option. For playstyles, offensive stats, and a simple brave bow signal, player phase initiator, Kumo Yumi adds plus 4 attack and speed, you have attack and speed catch, and speed and defense rain for more speed and damage. Very straightforward brave attacker with good claw potential, and Reyna gets warping for more attack options. Bring in attack boost and sacred seal, or maybe heavy blade if you want to try to proc glimmer in two hits. That may be a bit tough with a 7 might weapon. If Reyna can get close though, far trace gives contu if she has remaining movement. That may be tough to utilize, and it doesn't work if you warp far. Another option is Escape Route 4, which gives Kanto 1 if you're hurt. To guarantee a procs, you can just simply bring Fury as a seal. If you want more combat perks, then Desperation 4 is rare, but it does work at full HP if you move two or more spaces to initiate. The problem is that Reyna doesn't have a so sufficient offense and a follow-up skill to guarantee quads. I think her only way to force through follow-up denial is Brash Assault 4. Free follow-up attack, DR, and reflected damage if hit. You can run another percent DR skill like Remote Sparrow, and remember, Kumoyumi does that plus 4 defense and res instead of sacrificing any stats. For some other skills, Flared Sparrow for Flame Towns can be fun. Menace or Oath for Sea Skulls may bring more damage than Rain. Oath in general is fine to keep, but Kumoyumi already has Warping. If you don't need it, you can just run the Death Blow Echo attuned skill instead. For other weapons, White Cat Bow can grant that more damage, but Brave Hits are not guaranteed. Arcane Nastron or the Dark Bow are both good, but Rearm Tana does have Guidance for if you really want that. Overall, Ninja Reyna is pretty simple, but a solid flying archer. She comes with a fine base kit, and brave weapons are one of the few inheritables that I would say do compete with the arcane weapons. Our next newcomer is Ninja Heather. She's going to be a green infantry dagger unit, and you do want to keep an eye on her on this banner. For stats, Heather has 41 HP, 42 attack, 47 speed, 27 defense, and 30 res. Super boons and attack, speed, and defense, pretty dang good. Again, more attack is ideal for brave ninjas. Heather has a few ways to take a hit which can let her unleash a quad in tight situations. One of those is Remote Sparrow for damage reduction. She has Rally Attack and Speed Plus to pair with a new Ruse 4 B skill. Before that, Heather's weapon is the very cool Spy Shuriken. This weapon has 9 might, XRA specials, and has brave attacks on initiations. It also grants plus 5 tall stats if above 25% health. If Heather were to use a Rally Assist skill or is the target of one, then she grants the no follow-up status to herself and the ally. She also inflicts exposure on foes in current directions, and additionally, if Heather uses a Rally Assist, she gets to move again, once per turn. First off, extra actions are always powerful and annoying to face, so you really need to watch Heather if she's on the field. In addition to her Rally Field buffs, Heather supplies no follow-up and inflicts exposure. Combat-wise, she has a slaying Brave Dagger with plus 5 stats, However, with two brave hits on an exposed enemy, that's basically a free 20 true damage. If Heather quads, which happens if Shout Speeds thinks in the follow-up, then that's now 40 true damage in an assault. Kinda disgusting. 
Now while Spy Shuriken provides extra effects with Rally Assist, Heather will be the first unit with a Ruse 4 B skill. Speed and Defense Ruse 4 is insane now, and it definitely commands some respect. First off, the user now inflicts minus 4 speed and defense in combat, that's nice. If a Rally Assist is used by a unit or target's unit, inflict minus 6 speed and defense debuffs, the guard status, the discord status, and the new schism status on foes in current directions of the unit and ally. Ruse 4 B skills get an extra point of debuffs and now adds discord which inflicts up to minus 5 tall stats depending on how many foes are near the enemy. You still inflict guard and now a new schism status. Schism is incredible because it neutralizes triangle attack dual strike and pathfinder. If an ally still has triangle attack or dual strike without schism then units with schism will not count toward those effects since you need multiple allies to proc them. Finally if schism is neutralized it will take all of these effects to the grave with it. That is crazy. Schism I would say is a or the hard counter to someone like Harmonic Bridal Catria, obviously Harmonic Cordelia or Hather as well but Catria is the biggest offender. Let it be known though that odd or even recovery type skills will cleanse schism before triangle attack or the dual strike status are applied. So yes, recovery skills do counter schism. However, you can use Elamine to false start the healers with recovery. This prevents the at start of turn cleanse from activating so schism stays on the enemy. However, however, Freyr can block false start. Speaking of which, Freyr does nothing to Ruse for at all. He only blocks the at start of turn effects all the Ruse debuffs occur during a turn. As for Pathfinder, as suspected, Schism only targets the Pathfinder status. Dogger and Knot have Pathfinder built into their weapons, so you cannot turn that off. Dual Dogger's dual skill gives it Pathfinder status, and Schism will disable that. Regarding the last part of Schism, it turns out that ending your turn counts as neutralizing penalties since usually they disappear when you take an action. That means is that if you end your turn, Schism disappears and it will destroy any triangle attack, dual strike, or pathfinder status currently on the unit. You cannot end turn, then dance an ally, or just end turn to activate pathfinder. Restore staffs or harsh command will also not work either, just to be clear. This is not the end for Hermonicatria and others, but Schism being on an inheritable passive could signal other more sources to come. It's not exclusive like Elamine's false start or Freya's penalty denial. We'll just have to see though. When Ninja Heather introduces an interesting new penalty to the game, she herself is a very capable assassin, excellent speed, good base attack, and a slang brave dagger. Generally, Heather wants to rally, deploy the Ruse Debuffs, and then initiate with her extra action. This will apply Exposure, which is 10 true damage per hit, and Discord, which is up to minus 5 tall stats on the foe. Ruse inflicts its own minus 6 Debuffs, with another minus 4 in combat. Heather also gains no follow up and this puts her in a good position to quad. If 4 hits and exposure damage wasn't enough, she can proc lethality relatively easily. With times pulse you can have a 2 cooldown lethality, insert flashing blade or flash sparrow and you get lethality on the second hit. If you don't have lethality, Heather can get a quick moonbows, glimmers or lunas just fine. Personally, I would keep remote sparrow because if Heather isn't super super squishy, she can't take one hit and it lets her get to her quad attack. If you just want pure damage, attack and speed finish could double dip on a pre-charge special. For mixed phase, speed or attack smoke 4 could be used to stack with the regular dagger debuffs. Oath 4 would be a good pick for warping, although you can get that via the attuned skills now. Extra movement options to rally is good. If you have open space, savage blow could be fun with exposure stacking. Now, while Ruse 4 is perfect on a unit like Heather, there are some other fun skills you could technically use. As mentioned with Reyna, Desperation 4 and Escape Route 4 can work. Maybe not that crazy, but Wings of Mercy or Escape Route Long Range Warping into the Rally, then to the extra action is not the possibility. With all that said, Heather makes a very strong debut into Faye, one of the best Rally plus Ruse debuffers you can get, and a deadly brave attacking unit in her own right. Our next unit is Ninja Zelgius. First ult for the guy, definitely true, and he finally gets his red armor back. Seems like he's tired of losing to guys with headbands, so he got one for himself. Unfortunately, Red Armor Zelgius lost his sword and speed. Ninja Zelgius is a lance armor with 49 HP, 47 attack, 16 speed, 47 defense, and 42 res. Maybe he should have painted on some hot rod flames or something because this dude is slow as heck. Attack Super Boom though, and that is one of the highest attack stats in the game. Same goes for HP and defense, and 42 res is perfectly good as well. 
For old skills, Zelgius brings something different from the norm. He has Special Fighter 4, which previously was only on Winter Black Knight. What a coincidence. He then has Assault Troop, which was only on Harmonic Edelgard. No save skills for Armored Ninja. If you want to get technical, Charge from Assault Troop is considered warp movement, so it would seem like Zelgius did sneak in a little bit of warp powder with them. Now Zelgius' Scarlet Spear looks amazing, and it is the 11 might dual phase Brave Lance with excited specials. If he's above 25% health, he gets bonus attack and inflicts attack deals on the foe. Zogis also gets 30% DR for all hits, minus AoE, and heals 7 HP after combat. For his attack boss and debuffs, X is going to be equal to 25% of the foe's flat attack, minus 2. If they have 72 flat attack, Zogis gets the maximum, plus 16 attack and minus 16 attack debuffs. A 20 plus might brave weapon with fast specials is pretty spicy, man. Zelgius is quite tanky since he sacrificed all his speed this time. Consistent DR, healing sustain, and good attack debuffs will make him pretty sturdy. If you don't KO Zelgius first, he may unleash his unique special, Lightless Luna. Black Luna has been power correct. It's still a 3 quintal special that deals a massive hit that reduces the foe's defensive res by 80% for that attack. New to the special is if Lightless Luna or the foe's specials are ready, or have been triggered in combat, then the next attack Zogius takes is reduced by 40%. This works once per combat and excludes AoEs. As the wording suggests, Lightless Luna is Black Luna damage plus Armored Beacon and Flow's unpierceable 40% DR. That in itself is strong in today's game, but it does not have the range attacker condition, meaning Zelgius can get unpierceable DR into melee foes. Dear lord. For his new inheritable A skill, Zogis has distant defense and res solo. This is just a distant counter skill, and if you are alone, then you also get plus 5 defense and res in combat. It does require base DC if you want to inherit it. This is a strict upgrade to distant counter since DC is always active anyway. Preferably, though, you want to be alone for the stats. For playstyle, Ninja Zogius is a little all over the place, but that's fine. He's a very similar to Harmonic Summer Edelgard with a slaying dual phrase brave weapon and fully min max low for low speed. Instead of Raging Storm, Lightless Luna has immense damage with unpierceable DR if enemies bring specials. With Assault Troop, Zogius can warp powder into combat. With Special Fighter, one hit will charge Lightless Luna, second brave hit will proc it. If the foe is not dead, they have to get through Zogius' high base defense and res, 30% DR, and 40% unpierceable DR from Lightless Luna. He has guard, attack devils, healing sustain, and distant counter. Even if a foe has guard, one hit and one counter attack charges his special, second brave attack will proc it. The biggest letdown with old Black Luna is that percent DR neuters its one shot scare. In the modern age, Zogius can take Special Sparrow 4 for the Deer Piercing, or you can slap on Legendary Alir's support. Special Fighter is fun, but we have multiple ways to get Brett to cooldown on armors. For initiations, there's the Bold Fighter Seal, which gives quad potential. Also fun for Gale Force if you wanted to cosplay as Edelgard. On enemy phase, you can run Breath Sacred Seals instead, and there were also multiple cooldown support skills or support units out there. If you want enemy phase quads, Ventral Fighter also has Brett Tech cooldown. Speaking of enemy phase, nothing is stopping this man from running Savior builds. Lightless Luna even has the unpierceable DR, and this works into melee foes as well. If you just want to be a wall, Hardy Fighter is fine. Slaying and Brave Hits is good for recharging Pavis or Ages. Overall, Ninja Zogus looks like a very fun unit that does have room to experiment. Just got to watch out for those nasty little hammers. Last up for today is Duel Ninja, Sanaki, and Makaya. These two sisters are combining their firepower and will be a Red Mage Cavalier with 40 HP, 47 attack, 24 speed, 16 defense, and 47 res. Attack and speed super boons, although Sanaki probably isn't going to go for any follow-ups. 47 attack and res will tie for highest among all mages in the game. Very impressive. Just don't get touched by any non-magic damage. For old skills, Sunaki has Iceberg and two newer tier 4 debuffing options, Sabotage Attack and Res 3 and Defense and Res Ploy 3. Both are still rather rare and very strong. Even if Sunaki will overlap Res debuffs, extra coverage doesn't hurt her and Sunaki wants as many debuffs on the foe as possible. For their Radiant Scrolls, this is an 8 might dual phase Brave Tome that excites specials and has Far Trace Kanto built in. Hey, something new. The devs gotta keep Dire Thunder in check. Meanwhile, there's more here. If Sanaki initiates combat or is near an ally, she inflicts minus 6 attack and res on the foe, deals true damage per hit equal to Y, and reduces the effects on the foe's non-special percent tier skills by percentage equal to Y times 4. This Y value is the highest total penalties among the target or any foes within 2 spaces of them. 
First off, to no surprise, Sanaki has a slang dual phase brave tome. Her true damage is basically dominance, but also take into account nearby foes if the enemy can neutralize their debuffs. At the same time, Sanaki has DR piercing capabilities, which is rare for a mage cav, and this also scales with the amount of debuffs on the foe. She technically can fully pierce damage reduction skills, but you're gonna need a total of 25 stat penalties on the foe. For example, with Sabotage employed in her kit, Sanaki inflicts minus 7 defense, minus 7 res, and minus 6 attack on the foe. This is a total of minus 20 total debuffs. Not only does this translate into 20 true damage per hit via dominance, but Sanaki will cut enemy DR skills by 20 times 4, which is 80%. That is for every single attack. As is tradition for the ninja dual pairings, Sanaki and Makaya's dual skill is simply an extra action. However, this can only be used if you have entered combat during the current turn. With that in mind, it's basically a Gale Force action. If you don't activate Kanto, you can Gale Force then use Kanto to retreat later. For the arena players out there, we have entered 205 arena scoring on the dual effects for dual heroes. Have fun with that. Now you can further synergize the dual skill with Flared Mirror. This is basically the res variant of Flared Sparrow. If unit initiates, deal 7 damage as combat begins, grant plus 7 attack and plus 10 res. After combat, apply Divine Vein Flame Tiles to 5 spaces in a line. In a similar vein as Brave Golveg, Sanaki can initiate, use her dual skill, and attack an enemy on the flame tiles again. Bring other flared mirror or sparrow users and or dancers to stack the as combat damage begins. You can also use the flame tiles as a safety boundary since it cuts off enemy ranged attackers. The flared A skills are really great for any of the ninja duo units in general. To no surprise, Duo Sanaki and Mikaya are another hybrid combat support mage. Very high base res to trigger sabotage employ debuffs, and those debuffs give Sanaki her DR piercing effect. If both her debuffs land, she reduces enemy DR skills by 80%. This is very strong because she has a slang brave tome with extremely high attack, and Sanaki inflicts minus 23 res total. You then add dominance true damage, exposure true damage, and flared mirrors as combat begins damage. In the 80% tier Pierce example, Sanaki would get 20 dominance true damage and 10 from exposure and times 2 for brave hits. Without considering actual basic attacks or special damage, this is 60 true damage with 80% DR piercing. If you do not have immense resistance, unpierceable damage reduction, or the ability to neutralize debuffs, Sanaki will destroy you very easily. Even if you can get rid of debuffs, if your teammates do not, then Sanaki still gets empowered. She has her Galeforce dual skill for more actions and Bartrace Kanto built into her weapon. If you're gonna run Moomba or Glimmer, she can proc those in two hits. Use Heavy Blade, you can get Iceberg or Luna in two hits. Now, we did just get a refine for a unit with cab effectiveness and vantage. That would be a great way to cheese Sanaki first. However, Hardy Bearing shuts down any vantage strats. If Sanaki is your only debuffer on your team, you may want to run Stillwater or even double up on it. If you have another consistent debuffer, then maybe you can run other skills like Bratch Assault, Lulls, Attacker Panic Smoke 4, Menace, etc. Personally, I think Flare Mirror with the dual skill is too fun and it helps protect Sanaki with the flame tiles. Sabotage Attack and Res 3 also provides a lot of debuffs in combat since it basically has the sabotage status effect. You also want the tier 4 ploy for exposure. Like all our Brave Weapon users, it's just a free 20 or 40 true damage. While Sanaki does have dual phase Brave attacks, high base res, and inflicts a lot of attack debuffs, she's still mainly a player phase initiator first. If a weak mage tries to fight her, I hope they don't bring any debuffs with them. Very solid unit, easy to use, and it will just blow up so many DR stacking units if you cannot get rid of your debuffs. This ninja banner is quite good. The 5 stars are all competent brave attackers while Heather brings a new debuffing tool that may or may not be a necessity for some. Duo Sanaki is going to be a menace. For those not summoning, the Tempest Trials has begun and you can get Ninja Saizo. Maybe redundant, but Saizo this time has his Dreadfighter Drip and he's a super rare free to play Lance Infantry unit. We'll talk about him more next video. I've been tempted to summon on every banner recently, gonna need to make some choices soon. Now, good luck to those of you who are summoning. I will see you guys in the next video.